Welcome back everyone to another video and in front of you is something that has been featured on this channel twice before. Now uh, I've done this before what I'm doing to do in this video but uh, because of my inexperience of the Windows command line interface more like the DOS command line interface since I've grown up using Linux is that um, I had to delete a whole two hours of recording and that actually made things a bit worse so now i'm doing this the second time and with the knowledge of the things that i hadn't done correctly i am going to guide you through this process probably and uh, let you know how what is the proper way to do things so uh, today we are going to install open Seuss on Windows. Now we all know that Ubuntu on Windows is a thing and it happens by a feature called WSL or Windows Subsystem for Linux. Now what that is, it provides a platform to convert Windows commands and Windows system calls to a system call that can be read and interpreted by Windows, making Ubuntu or any other Linux operating system work on a Windows platform like the windows 10 for now but another thing is it doesn't use any usual uh you know ubuntu iso file it uses something called a docker image now the docker image is sort of like a root fs based Im uh, only image so it doesn't contain the kernel which is a specific kernel provided by windows to that uh, image and that is how it works so now there have been third parties that have gone ahead and other developers that have gone ahead and created tools to install other operating systems on uh, WSL and I've done a video on Fedora 24 so you can go ahead and look it up. Uh, so today we are going to do the same thing but with support from or shall I say partial support from SUSE since they uh, don't really you know have any official um, or announcement of doing this but they do have a blog post on their main community blog by a person uh, a, a respected uh, member of the community to do this thing and it seems legit enough so we are going to go ahead and try it out and install a SUSE based OS on uh, WSL on Windows 10 so the first thing to do is to have the windows 10 uh, wsl installed and ubuntu running now i would remind you that if you are doing so make a user while installing wsl because that is kind of necessary because that is the files that you will be accessing and if there is no user if you are using as a root account that account is actually inside the root fs and not outside it will be clear um, when we go ahead and try to install open Suse on windows 10 so first command would be to simply co uh, have uh, and download the open uh, docker image and that would be simple wget command with you know the url and that would take about a few seconds to do so all right so uh with that done i think we can move on uh now i would remind you at this point make sure to exit the bash uh, the uh, bash cell shell or the wsl command line and make sure that it is actually off and there's no other window uh, for WSL running in the background because that would hurt the process you know I told you two hours time wasted don't do this make sure it's closed and then open command line prompt now I've tried it on PowerShell and believe me there is a video coming why I hate PowerShell and Windows in general so let's concentrate on this and um, yeah we didn't have to close the bash right away all right so we still have to extract it all right so here it says the sudo command of course because we will be creating a directory and let's give it a password 
all right so now you would be wondering now since we are creating a directory in the home user why are we using sudo because sudo gives you permission to pretty much everything it's uh and that means if it is a rootfs folder it needs to be a folder that has all the permissions already uh in the files so yes we need to make a folder that uh, has root only access and not access to every user so till it's extracting the second command was simply extracting we'll wait out it's done now again remember exit it or you will waste two hours for nothing that's it it's gone it's exited now we can open up the command line uh, command prompt uh, i will increase the text size so that it's easily visible or even if you are looking at a lower resolution uh, and then we'll uh, cd into our local app data and then lxss which is the folder where all the uh, files related to wsl are stored rename our ubuntu rootfs file to rootfs.ubuntu in this is sort of a backup now if you want to remove your open source and get back to the basic ubuntu rootfs you once had and that should be done in a uh, jiffy next simply move the rootfs folder back now here comes the trick change the where it says linux user change it to whatever user you were using and press enter one directory is moved perfect now here is why you won't don't have to use a root uh, user while downloading and extracting the files the directory for root user in linux is actually slash root slash that's it done that's where all the root files are and if you are at uh, using as a root folder that's where that would be it wouldn't be in a separate home directory and that is bad because the root directory is inside the rootfs folder but the home directory is actually linked to a separate folder outside the rootfs folder and that is how wsl works and that is how this particular guide works and that's why uh, you should have a user and use it as such so don't do it if you are a root user create a user and then do it now again uh, the l we'll need to run the lx user command and that command is to basically uh, manage the wsl uh, base and the installation and install uninstallation of a wsl based os on this system on windows 10 and that would now allow us to set uh, the default user as root because uh, right now OpenSUSE won't be accessing our user uh, and next we can just uh, jump up to our OpenSUSE installation we are done with it and we can start it up and there we have it we are at bash now this is the command line I was already working on I can also open up the command line that was previously uh, open for bash specifically for bash uh, increase the text size and now if I do um, name a it should say this and then all right and then so it says welcome to open source leap 42.2 so yes we are at open source and that works perfectly and that also means that a uh, zipper should work zipper and update yes perfect uh, we are running at open source perfectly well um, no issues so far there are a few steps more though so if you want to make it look like it is running open source there are a few commands that you need to execute those will simply change the name or uh, from bash uh, on ubuntu to uh, bash on 
uh, open source on windows or something like that and also give it a cool green logo of course the open source's own logo and i will leave or uh, i think i won't go too much into that since that's only a glamour thing i uh, won't really change the functionality but uh, and i tend i i want to change it back to ubuntu uh, you know just to keep things up to date and so that my windows doesn't mess up with me so here's a small image of that if you want to see i'll just open it up yep there, this is how it looks like you know just it would say bash on shoes on windows instead of bash on ubuntu on windows uh so and so that concludes the video on how to make windows green again because after xp windows has been a kind of blue so with that pun i leave you and thank you so much for watching i will see you all in the next one and make sure to like share and subscribe and see you